Welcome to our kitchen counter, the perfect place to enjoy some delicious conversation, all the while sipping on some richly satisfying coffee. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So, what are we chatting about this time? The steps we can take to grow in our genuine faith with God. Now, this is a follow-up to our last chat, one suggested by Alan Panamino, 9508, all about how to have genuine faith in the light of doubts that have caused, at least in part, by our repeated sin. Thank you once again, Alan Panamino, 9508, for this wonderful suggestion. And I do hope you find this chat to be worthy of the time it took you to make that suggestion. So, what steps can we take to grow and mature in our genuine faith, you know, and stop the doubts and even stop the occasional repetition of a sin? And I do think this is something that is very important to remember. We are talking about those people who actually want to grow and stop sinning, not those who merely want to be known as a Christian, but have no interest in changing who they are or what they do. Would that make them a chino? No, I'm not talking about the pants. But, you know, Christian in name only. Well, anyway, remembering that following Jesus first and foremost, involves a relationship with him, well, it sort of makes sense that genuine faith is based upon this relationship, right? And so, any steps we take need to be ones that directly enrich and grow this relationship, right? Well, that got me to thinking. What do we do when we grow a relationship with somebody else? You know, such as with our best friend. Do we spend time with that person? Or do we merely listen to what other people say about him and then decide, based on this alone, that this person here is my best friend? I mean, sure, I haven't actually gotten to know the man, Or, you know, shared anything with him at all. But hey, he sounds kind of cool. So, yep. Yes, indeed, he is my new bestie. Yeah, not quite, right? That's that's not how it works. See, you spend time talking with, hanging out with, laughing and identifying with this person, right? You spend time sharing concerns and problems and issues with this person. You actually take the time to get to know them. And in doing so, you learn you can trust them and can then commit to being their friend as well. Right? Well, since that is true of how we build relationships, all relationships, then This is also how we grow our relationship with Jesus, with God himself. See, we have to spend time with God, time talking with him, laughing with him, sharing ourselves with him. And we have to commit to being his friend as well. See, Having genuine faith involves genuinely doing what it takes to become his friend. So, what does it take to become his friend? Well, as we talk with, you know, laugh with, and share concerns with another person, we are communicating with that person, right? And communication is a vital key in any relationship. No communication means no relationship. So, you might ask, how is it we actually communicate with Jesus? 
I mean, he's not exactly physically present, right? I mean, we can't just go hang out at the coffee shop with him. And, well, you know, communication is a two-way street, right? So, how does he communicate with us? Well, two quick answers pop up in my mind. The first, read the Bible. And the second, pray. See, the Bible is the primary way that God communicates with us. It is through the Bible, His Word, that God shares who He is with us. And prayer is our primary way of communicating with Him. And when the two of these are joined together, we have entered into the dance known as communication. We must allow Jesus to share who He is, and we must share who we are if our relationship with Him is to ever grow. So, step one to take in growing your relationship. And I know, I know this is coming out of nowhere, almost blindsiding you in fact, right? So, you know, grab your coffee, take a sip, brace yourself. Ready? It is to read the Bible. I know, I know, I know. Now, by reading the Bible, I do not mean opening it up, opening it up to a verse like, well, John eleven thirty five, 35, and reading the words, Jesus wept and saying, done, accomplished, box checked, read the Bible, I'm growing now. Okay, okay granted, that's a bit of an over-exaggeration, but you know, you get the point, right? You get the point, right? If we genuinely believe that God speaks to us through His Word and we are pursuing a genuine relationship with Him, we need much more than Bible snippets. We even need more than to memorize a few passages. Okay, now, someone is going to say that I just said to not memorize Scripture, and I said no such thing. I said it is not enough to memorize Scripture. Now, you may be thinking, okay, okay then, well, what is enough? What do you mean when you say we need to read the Bible? Well, let me suggest to you that you always read a chapter or two at a time. You know, don't just read Matthew 1. I mean, Matthew chapter 1 and chapter 2. Don't read Mark chapter 2 and Luke chapter 10. Read consecutive chapters to get the full gist of what's going on. Get out of the habit of only reading a verse at a time. Now, I know that's a very popular thing to do. And I know that many devotionals tend to have a verse or maybe two listed as the basis for that devotional. But... Take the time to read the whole chapter those verses are listed in. And, you know, maybe even the previous chapter or the next chapter to give context to that verse to see what Jesus may be saying about himself. Then take some time apart from the devotional. I mean, do the devotional, but take time away from the devotional as well to think about those passages. What do they reveal about who Jesus is? Now, if you're unsure about something, you know, that the passage is saying, well, look it up using some resources, such as a good concordance. You can even do so online with most of those places being for free as well, such as BibleHub.com. Now, I'm not affiliated with BibleHub.com nor any other that I may mention, but I do use the ones I mentioned and as well as other things, to keep things looking things up, finding answers for myself. See, Bible Gateway is another wonderful source. Okay, Use all the sources available to you to research, to glean what is possibly being said. Now, you may be asking, do you mean that 
I really have to think? <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. And quite honestly, it's not that bad of a thing to do. It can even be quite exciting to learn new things, pick up new nuances, see what is actually being said. Give it a try. I dare you. I double dog dare you. <laughs> Give it a try. Now, something else that I have found helpful is that before actually reading the Bible, is to go and ask Jesus to actually reveal himself, to share himself with me through the reading. See, I am truly not motivated by learning a lesson. I only want to learn more about Jesus. See, I have learned that if I seek Jesus first and foremost, you know, seeking only to get to know him better, I get to know him as a lesson is taught. Yes, fear not, lessons are indeed taught and learned. I mean, well, Jesus does want us to live for him, right? And in doing so, to honor the Father. Well, that being so, it kind of makes sense that he will teach us what we need to know as we are spending time learning who he is. Now, if you miss out on him and only look for facts and lessons, well, you will be like the Pharisees and the teachers of his day, teachers of the law who poured over scriptures, trying to glean everything they could. I mean, they knew all the facts. They knew the lessons but they missed out on who all those things pointed to. And really, what's the point of that? And, you know, I find this beautifully summed up in the Psalms, in the very first one, as a matter of fact. Psalm chapter 1, verse 2, which tells us that the blessed person is the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who, on the law of the Lord, meditates day and night. See, reading the Bible and then allowing it to occupy our minds as we go through our day is how we allow God to communicate with us. So, breaking this down a little bit, Perhaps, as you start your day, you know, think about what Jesus has just revealed to, about himself in the passage you just read, right? And then, perhaps, about midday or so, think a moment about how what you had read earlier, how has that been reflected in the way you've conducted yourself so far? And maybe even ponder how it can influence your conduct through the rest of the day and into the evening. And perhaps, perhaps at night, you know, you're getting ready for bed, reflect upon what you learned about Jesus and how that was applied in your life during the day. Well, in other words, how you've allowed Jesus to speak to you throughout the day by intentionally bringing what you have learned about and through him into your daily life. See, remember, Jesus is alive and well, and through his word, he is still actively speaking to us. He is trying to communicate, if we will, but take the time to both listen and hear. Okay, so moving on to step two in how to grow our relationship with Jesus, and that is prayer. See, prayer is our communication with God. And since, well, God is taking the time to share who he is with us, should we not take the time to share who we are with him? Now, you might be thinking, 
share ourselves with God? Doesn't he already know everything about us? What could possibly be the benefit of our sharing something that well, he already knows? Well, for starters, we, we as people only ever build relationships as we share ourselves with the other person. See, the level at which we share is directly tied to the level of the relationship we have or want. See, trust on our part is built in those with whom we share ourselves, and it is strengthened as we share ourselves. If we do not share, no trust is built. Now, you might be thinking, isn't prayer all about asking for forgiveness and asking for things? Well, no. I mean, yes, those things are a part of our communication with God. But they are not what prayer is all about. Prayer is about sharing who you are with Jesus. Sharing your joys and hopes, your doubts and fears, your struggles, your wants, your needs, your gratitude and satisfaction. You know, and for asking for forgiveness and even asking for things. It's about getting in touch with God. But always remember to share and share everything. Authentically share yourself. See, if you don't share yourself, that means you are merely playing a religious game or perhaps seeking a fairy godfather to grant you wishes. You are not pursuing genuine faith. For genuine faith grows and blossoms and matures in this dance of communication. See, through searching for Jesus in his word and sharing yourself with him, and as this happens, you will find that you possess more and more of the strength that Jesus provides to say no to the temptations that come your way. Well, very simply put, the more he and his love fill your heart, the less room there is left for sin to reside. This is a process. It is not magical. It is not emotional. For the closer you grow to Jesus, the more you are transported further and further away from your old sinful self. Let me put it to you this way. The more Jesus fills our life through a growing relationship, he changes us to the point where we desire more of Jesus and his love, and we do this even more than we desire the temporary self-gratification sin provides. Well, in other words, a greater desire is brought to say no to the temptations that come to us. And that's all Jesus is doing. See, a wise man once said that God will do for us what we cannot do. I mean, he will forgive and he will save us, but he will never do for us what we can and must do. See, he will not give us the character that, that he wants us to have, that we must take steps to build. I mean, yes, he will aid us in taking these steps, but providing assistance in taking steps? is not the same thing as taking over and taking the steps for us, is it? Well, to use an illustration from the world of getting fit, we could say that we have the gym membership and the personal trainer provided for us, but we still have to do the reps ourselves in order to get trim and fit, right? Okay. Well, there is one last practical step that I'd like to mention before rounding this out. And I do find that this step goes hand in hand with the first two. 
See, Paul shares this step in Colossians 3 and then with slightly different wording in Philippians chapter 4. In Colossians, he says to set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. And in Philippians, he says it, well, he says it this way, whatever is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Whatever, he says, you have learned or received or heard from me, put that into practice, and the peace of God will be with you. See, I find this idea to be reflected in the age-old saying that you are what you think about. See, whatever you dwell on, you know, consistently feed into your mind, that is what you become. So feed it a steady diet of what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable, which does mean to stay, mean, which does mean to actually stay away from those things that are not. Things that feed your selfish and sinful desires. Okay, so what might that look like? Well, again, I find Psalms chapter 1, verse 2, to give us a very positive direction. Remember, it says, Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So, one of the pure and holy things is the teachings of God. Isn't that fascinating? So, maybe, you know, Instead of watching more news or sports or music videos or self-help videos, find some good apologetic videos to watch. Ones that talk about verses of the Bible, different ways to apply it, what things mean. You know, maybe, maybe you do have to seek out new music to listen to, as what is currently on your playlist encourages a life that is very different from one growing in Jesus. No, this is not about censorship or banning books. It's about being honest with yourself and God as to what will indeed nourish your relationship with Him and what harms it, and then responding accordingly. And, you know, it's not even about getting rid of bad things. But it is abandoning even good things if those good things get in the way of your relationship with God. I mean, that's the point of Jesus' statement in Matthew chapter 5, you know, where he says, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. See, the eye and the hand, very good and useful things. But if they if these good things get in the way of the best, you know, of maintaining a relationship with Jesus, well, they got to go. And yes, this is metaphoric language. It's all metaphors, stressing the need to get rid of the good that gets in the way of the best. It's not actually literally speaking about gouging out your eye or cutting off your hand. Huh. That kind of felt like saying, caution, contents are hot, you know, that are printed on a cup of freshly poured coffee. Oh, well. Getting back to thinking about noble things and pure things. You know, maybe throughout your day, think about how to apply what you read in the morning. Think about the Bible passage you read. Ponder how to show God's love to that co-worker who is always working against you. You know, the one stabbing you in the back, painting you in a bad light. Maybe. Well, I'll tell you what. Rather than come up with a laundry list of things that may or not may not be relatable to you, I'm going to defer to yourself, to you. You need to decide between you and God. Communicate with Him. Ask Him to help you find the things you need to focus on and to let you know what you need to let go. 
And will you have to give up everything you like? No, not at all. Will you have to give up some things? As we've already mentioned, yes. Now in this, allow Jesus to show you what to keep focused on and what to avoid while you focus on him. He'll teach you. And, do you want to hear the biggest secret in the world that really isn't a secret at all? This isn't the path of the killjoy. It is the path leading to an abundance of richly satisfying life. One of completed joy. You will be happy you began walking this path and dancing this dance of communication. And remember, you are indeed what you think about all the time. The more you fill your mind with things above, the more like God you will become as your relationship with Him grows. And the closer you grow to Jesus, the more you will be building the character God wants you to grow into. And the more you will honestly desire to not, to say no to temptation. Well, until next time then, Alan Panamino 9508, I do hope this has been worth your effort in making this wonderful suggestion. And may you continue to pursue and genuinely grow in your relationship with Jesus. Now, as always, please let me know what you think about all this in the comments section. I do love hearing from you. And please, do me the honor of telling me why you agree or disagree. For then we are in communication with each other. And we both can grow in our relationship with Jesus. Perhaps even start a friendship here. I have started a couple of friendships with people already. I'm enjoying the process thoroughly. This would be a very cool thing to start with you as well. Okay then. Well, until next time. Take it easy, take it slow, and make coffee into your cup forever flow. Hmm.